How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And yes, it is Wednesday on this show, and you know what that means? Tonight is AW Dynamite, and we have a lot announced for the show. They added a couple of segments overnight. This morning, today, and uh, and they also announced that uh, later on today, man, I thought we were done with it, but apparently not. The rankings will be updated. So for those of you that love to tear apart or analyze or whatever, make your own stories about the rankings, well, today's your lucky day. We got the lineup for the show. We'll talk about that. As well as last night's NXT, which uh, second week in a row, big improvement over what it had been the last couple of months. And um, one of those shows where they did something that just it was so good that it made me so mad. So we'll talk about that here today. Got the lineup for Stand and Deliver. We have got a uh, bunch of other news as well, including the announcement of Double or Nothing. I thought we might have to wait until the uh, next pay-per-view wrapped up for them to announce Double or Nothing, but they did. And uh, as I pretty much had told everybody, well... It is going to be taking place on the same weekend as the Observer F4W convention. So I think that you should go. And I'll tell you about that as well as more info uh, when the AW show is going to be taking place. We got raw notes, the ratings from uh, Monday night, which nothing particularly special about the ratings until you look at the quarter hours. We'll tell you about that. We have the stipulation for the New Japan King of Pro Wrestling provisional title match coming up. Fans have voted. Thank you, fans. We'll tell you about that and so much more. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Welcome to the special tour of Figure Four Weekly Headquarters, as promised. Today I will be accompanied by my assistant Vincenzo, so let's get moving. Hey, don't worry about it. Today's a special day, I'll drive. Today's going to be a good day, so let's not F anything up, okay? Now, I'd like to tell everybody, I just want to give a short speech on the way to uh, the compound here today, and that is that we are going through very tough economic times right now. Right, Vince? It's a time of uh, stock market crashing, the yen is devalued, a time of woe and want. and. Many of you watching this right now, for all I know, are unemployed. But the good thing is, and I always like to look on the bright side, as Vince is well aware, the good news is that for every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And the silver lining is that Figure Four Weekly is doing great. It's a huge success right now. Subscriptions are up, quality is down, Profit margins are skyrocketing. Things are going very well. So the one thing is that I don't want to make it seem like money is everything because money cannot buy happiness. But what it can buy is enormous houses. And that makes me happy. So we will be going to see my enormous house, the Figure Four Weekly Compound. And uh, that's where we're heading right now.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And we got a lot to talk about here today, but uh, I want to make a note about the Raw ratings before we go any further, because apparently it's been the subject of much debate. Raw show Monday, 1.73 million viewers and a .57 in 18 to 49. Bachelor on ABC, 4.14 million and a .8, which is very high. And uh, Iowa versus West Virginia NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, 4.9 million viewers, which would be the third largest viewing audience for a women's NCAA tournament game in the past 20 years. And Raw was up 2% in total viewers. Rating was uh, up from last week. The uh, 18 to 49, which did a 0.55 last week. And the hours, 1.76 million, 1.83 million. Second hour is now consistently higher because of the daylight savings time switch. And the third hour did 1.60 million. And as a guy who I got to hear it all the time, oh, you hate CM Punk. Well, I'm here to defend CM Punk from a bunch of stupid stuff written on the internet. In the usual, ah, oh, they couldn't get 2 million with CM Punk. The quarter hours for this show. This was one of those shows where it's kind of just sort of going like this, and then it goes, ram, straight up in the air. That's CM Punk, Seth Rollins, and uh, Drew McIntyre segment. Did a whopping 2.2 million viewers for Raw. I'm not even sure the last time the show did 2.2 million viewers for a quarter. But, uh, man, that thing shot straight up. And next week... When they have The Rock and Roman Reigns advertised for the show, I think we're going to have another one of those. I think, um, if I recall correctly, uh, the last time it shot straight up, I think, was uh, when they did the that uh, Cody Rhodes deal uh, last week on the show. If I can find it here, that would have been, uh, what's today, March 20th? Yeah, so the Cody Rhodes segment also shot straight up last week which I was very, very impressed by. It was like the highest rated show, or highest rated quarter on the show by far, 1.96 million. So uh, it shot even higher than that for uh, CM Punk in Chicago with Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. And man, whatever the heck that segment was. You know what that was? That Good. was a promo train wreck is what that was. And somebody in the chat here says... What? There what you go. are you talking about? Are you Throw kidding tra- me? A train wreck? Oh, my God. We have Listen. had train wreck segments in professional wrestling and on the microphone. Look, that may have gone on for way too long, but three guys all hit their points and all scored points they with did. the fans, I thought. They did. I was, I, was, I was greatly compelled. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. But, you know, listen, I don't want this to go out on the Internet saying that I'm saying this is true. I'm just saying this is a fan, okay? I watched that segment, and someone in the chat here goes, pretty sure all three of those guys actually hate each other. And uh, as a fan watching it, as a fan watching it, I thought, I'm pretty sure those three guys hate each other. And even (laughs) Seth goes, are you guys done trolling each other yet? Because Drew and Punk going back and forth, listen, everybody, there there were some, you know, anytime you do anything like, you know, everyone's kind of pretty much on the same page, mostly. But but not always. And I don't care what anyone tells me. You cannot convince me for any amount of money that it was scripted for Drew McIntyre to say, I, I'm i the chosen one, or whatever it was he said, and for CM Punk to respond with, who named you the chosen one? Say his name. Because everyone knows who... It was Vince, and that was Punk's little checkmate right there. And, you know, Drew laughed it off and everything, but there is no way that they are scripting a Vince McMahon line into television. That was one where they decided to, uh, you know, and that happens sometimes. So, uh, but anyway, I couldn't couldn't take my eyes off it, and neither could anybody else. 2.2 million for that quarter. People complaining about that. Don't be silly. Look at your boy Lenny in the chat. 1997 called and wanted its segment back. 
Come on, man. There yeah, are you know what you know what was really popular in 1997? Wrestling. It was called a boom period, and it was insanely successful. And so I don't know how that's some sort of uh, knock on anything. Look, there were a lot of people who seemingly are going out of their way to try to tear down that Raw on Monday, which, you know, hey, to each their own. If people hated it, they hated it. I think it's been the best one of this new regime certainly the best raw in quite some time but certainly under tko auspices this has been the best one i thought it was a well-balanced show i thought they hit on everything they needed to hit and even the stuff that went too long it was actually as you said it was compelling whether you thought that went too long or whether you thought the rock stuff with cody at the beginning went too long now the other thing i got to talk about at the top of the show here is I know people like to say that I never can admit that I'm wrong, but that's that's just a lie. Mm-hmm. I I have many times. Wait a second. But I will, I will double down. Oh, I why? will die on this hill. Do you understand? <laughs> All right. What is it? I watched NXT last night, and they did prime target Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Man. And, oh, my God, they went back to, like, who did they have on here with, with uh, there was a segment with Trick, which was, like, the greatest segment I've ever seen. It was, they went back to Philadelphia. They actually went to Philadelphia. And Trick is introducing us to sweet baby James, his, his uncle. uncle, who took him in and is the reason that he is in NXT today. Fly to death. Did sweet baby James is going to stand and deliver. They had an interview with Gary Cobb, who was a former NFL player. I don't even know why they interviewed him. I mean, did Trick was he coaching Trick at he some was point? Running the steps type of I don't know. Teammate, I'm sure. But this guy, I swear to God, he cut the best promo of anyone in NXT by miles. I was dying, dying to see Jerry Cobb and uh, The Rock go back and forth in a promo battle. Or Curtis Iakea, it doesn't matter to me. And uh, and then they talked to William Davis, a family friend, who got the second greatest. And anyway, <laughs> this freaking prime target, when this was over, why in the name of the good Lord above is this not trick going for the title at WrestleMania? Dude. Why? And then, stop, Mike. I don't want to hear it. I'll mute you. Then, then it's the world title feud. Do you guys know what they're doing for the world championship feud? Well, first off, Elia gets in the ring with freaking Stax. Okay? I like Stax. Okay? I like the guy. He gives this guy 95% of the match. Stax just beats him, and, and the crowd's dead. Because the crowd's thinking the exact same thing I am. I want to see Ilya Dragunov kill some bloke. But he just sells and he sells. It's like a Randy Savage match. I'm going to sell the entire match from the opening bell. And then I'm going to hit one flying elbow at the end. Or in Ilya's case, one torpedo. Escape by the skin of my teeth. And then the follow-up is... Tony wants to meet him for dinner next week. One should not have to do with the other, They're Brian. They're going to dinner. Oh, boy. This is the build to the world title. Bro, this, what do you want me to take this trick prime to target pool? was like Mayweather Pacquiao back oh, in 2008 boy. when they did that uh, that series on HBO. Bro, I, I was just aghast. I'm like, why in God's name? Bro, Mike. Mike. What? There's not even a stip. I know. It's not loser leaves town. It's not last man standing. Look, there should it's be a not step. lights out. It's, be hey, guys, we're going to do a, the best prime target I've probably ever seen at NXT. It was. For it was. a wrestling match. I mean, come on. Look, it come was, on. Brian, you're exactly right. And if you wanted to do the title, you could have done that. But they decided to go with Ilya Dragunov. This is the champion, and I'm fine with that. As long as we get Trick Williams and Carmelo one-on-one, with some sort of definitive finish. And I would rather it be a stip match, but you keep dragging up the title, don't worry. He'll have it soon. I don't want him to have the title after WrestleMania weekend. I want sweet baby James to be sitting there over WrestleMania weekend watching Trick win the title. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hello, ladies.
ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm excellent, Brene. I'm you're excellent. Good. Yep. Uh, very excited that you're able to join us here tonight. Congratulations on retaining the AEW World Championship in such an incredible match with Hangman Adam Page, Swerve Strickland. You guys beat the ever-loving hell out of each other. Should I ask you if you're even remotely surprised that you are still our champion tonight? Not at all. Um, you know, I've always made it a, a point to, uh, you know, tell the world what I'm going to do, and I think that I've delivered uh, on every uh, promise that I've made here in AEW. Uh, tonight was no different. You know, obviously, Swerve and Hangman, two tremendous young competitors, but they just didn't have enough, and I'm just that much better. So here I am, the champion. All right, guys, the floor is open to you guys. Any uh, questions you guys have for Samoa Joe? It's all you. Take the first one out here, Joe. Thanks for your time, Joe. My name is Jonathan McClarty from flagshipnews.com and militarynews.com. Uh, congratulations on your victory tonight. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, you know, with Hangman and Swerve, beefing with each other for so long, do you think that served as a distraction to, to further help you to retain tonight? Well, you know, first off, I want to thank your readers for their service. Secondly, um, you know, it was a huge mistake by both those gentlemen. I mean, obviously, they have very, very bad blood between each other. So, you know, these uh, heated issues can often boil over into other parts of their life, unfortunately. It boiled over tonight, which is the worst place for it to happen. So, I mean, if uh, those gentlemen want to stay uh, eyes locked on each other, they thought that the path to salvation was through uh, each other's blood. Well, unfortunately, it wasn't because uh, I made sure that did not happen tonight. So, that's what I feel. Here we go, Lyric Swinton, SNMU Weather Radio. Uh, so, you talked earlier a couple of weeks ago about bringing back the ranking system as a way to get the best opponents for the AEW World Championship. Today we saw an amazing match, one that you were a part of and also Will Ospreay and Takeshita. What are your thoughts on the growing strong talent pool in All Elite Wrestling and what it means to be world champion during this time with so much talent. I mean, it's indicative of what AEW has always stood for. You know, we go out, we find the best wrestlers in the world, and we bring them together to find out who is the best wrestler in the world. Currently, that is me. But on my heels are some of the greatest grapplers to ever step foot in a ring. You know, when we have acquisitions, men like Will Ospreay, how can you not be excited about the future of this company? And, uh, you know, once again, we've set up a protocol. Will Osprey is new here. He's a fantastic, dynamic athlete, has had tremendous success everywhere he's been. But until he has that success here, I don't need to worry about him. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So, yes, they did announce it. Double or Nothing is going to be taking place on uh, Memorial Day weekend, as we uh, expected that it would be. And uh, can I find it already? Here it is. Sunday, May 26th of the date. <laughs> MGM Grand Garden Arena. Ooh. Those of you just go to those big UFC events there. Fuck. Tickets will go on sale to the general public this Saturday. This is the first time hosting Double or Nothing since 2019 at the MGM. Past two years, it was at T-Mobile. And uh, Daly's Place in Jacksonville hosted the show during the pandemic 2020 and 2021. So uh, they will also be presenting Dynasty St. Louis on Sunday, April 21st. Just hit me. That was the old soap opera. <laughs> Finally, that you guys are going to get a new soap opera review coming. Yeah, wait, Dallas Falcon Crest. It's going to yeah. Be they should do A W Falcon Crest. <laughs> I think should be their next pay per view. A E W nine zero two one zero. I don't know about that one. Well, yeah, that that would be rough under the circumstances. Jungle Boys on the outs. <laughs> Bang, so anyway, they are going to be back. Uh, they did announce too. They're going to be back in Cali again too, as part of that Double or Nothing weekend. They're going back to the Kia Forum in Inglewood on the 29th for that dynamite. So there you go. Also in Palm Springs, California, big wrestling uh, city there, I guess well, now. Well, now that you know about Double or Nothing, 
Now you can start grabbing some tickets for the convention. Ah. So uh, we will be there that weekend, going to the pay-per-view, and we got a lot of events. I mean, there's so much fun stuff to do in Vegas, so there's plenty of time for you to do fun stuff, but also hang out with us. Annual all-you-can-eat dinner at Texas Day Brazil. I think that'll be Friday night. Vinny and I will be doing a live Q&A, a live Brian and Vinny show. You can ask questions. We'll do a meet and greet. It's going to be a lot of fun. Ed's got a pro wrestling show. Sweet party with details to come. Hey, take a look at that on the screen if you're watching on video. There's the uh, graphic. Las Vegas Convention 2024. Look at us. Yeah, 4wonline.com slash Vegas. Sweet party is noted. Annual brunch at the Wicked Spoon. And you can buy tickets for any of this by going to f4wonline.com slash Vegas. f4wonline.com slash Vegas. Don't know about uh, group tickets, but we should know imminently. And so we will let you know when we know. So that is the plan. BYOB? Uh, not at the Sweet Party. So Sweet Party's going to be There'll be plenty. Already. Fear All not. Right. I mean, you can. I mean, John in Memphis brings moonshine. Yeah. All right. The Rock and John Cena are both going to be appearing on The Tonight Show on Wednesday, April 3rd. The Rock and John Cena? The Rock and Roman Reigns. Thank you. <laughs> Did I say John Cena? Uh, you know, is it already Friday for you? Well, you know no. What? Hey, What's listen. You want today? me to talk about The Rock, Roman Reigns, and John Cena? Do it. Okay. So... When they were brawling on Monday night in the rain, covered in blood, they just happened to brawl in front of a giant truck with John Cena's massive face. All you could see in the background was John Cena's massive face, okay? So John Cena has made it clear he wishes he could have a road to WrestleMania. Well, have I got a road to WrestleMania for John Cena. He's going to be watching Cody's dog. And that is, you know, Cody's probably going to need some people to watch his back on Sunday when all hell breaks loose in that Bloodlines Rules match, if that is the direction they're going. Or Cena could maybe do Saturday night if they're going to have uh, Cody pin Rock. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can go here. And uh, I don't know which way they're going to go. Everyone seems to think... The Rock is is going to beat Cody. And my argument is, here's the thing. So, sometimes you want to have a match where the fans don't know who's going to win. And sometimes you have a match where the fans know exactly who's going to win. And you essentially tell them. And they pay for it because they want to see it and they get it and everybody's happy. This has happened throughout the history of wrestling in promotions all over the world. You're essentially telling people to finish. It's it's not a mystery at all. A flare for the gold, Starrcade 83. And they are doing that here. I mean, literally the storyline is that if Cody doesn't win the title, he can, this is the exact same thing they did in AEW, except Cody's idea in AEW was he just never wanted to challenge for the title, which I think he double, you know, he thought twice about it later, but it was too late. But they're saying if he doesn't beat Roman Reigns, he never gets to challenge for the title again. And they did not say against Roman. It's like, this is it. You win or you don't get to try again. So they're essentially telling you that he's winning. So what are they going to do on Sunday? Well, you could have Seth Rollins, his team lose, Seth and Cody. And then uh, they got bloodline rules on Sunday. But my problem with that, and maybe they know what they're doing, is that you know, they've they've announced his bloodline rules. The Rock and Roman can do anything. And I hate that because it's exactly like house rules matches. Okay, well, if The Rock and Roman can do anything, then the finish needs to be Cody can only win with a 630 splash. That's it. <laughs> That's the only way he can win because we can do anything. Rock's going to be the referee. You know, if he's a referee, Roman can win with a one count. Cody has to get a 600 count to win. If they can do anything... The whole thing just gets stupid. So I don't like bloodline rules. I just don't like it. If they had a specific set of rules, as I try not to sneeze, uh, then that's fine. But bloodline rules meaning we can do whatever we want, it makes it stupid. Maybe they got an idea. 
But you could do some wild bloodline rules and everybody runs in and Seth is there and, and John Cena shows up as the big surprise and whatever. Or Cody pins the rock in front of his mama. Gets his revenge on the rock. Rock, of course, is very upset. Cody goes on to beat Roman. Cody's going to be your guy. He's going to be the top guy in the company. So he should pin The Rock and Roman Reigns on the same weekend. Pin The Rock. Rock's angry at Roman. Maybe Roman screwed up leading to it. This leads to your Rock and Roman match. Rock is going to do, this is his plan. This could all change. He's going to do one more match. And it's with Roman Reigns. So what's the point of Rock pinning Cody if Cody and The Rock is not on the books? It doesn't make any sense. I guess you could pin Seth or whatever. But I think that Cody should pin The Rock. That starts to split between Rock and Roman. Now Roman's screwed. I got to do this with nobody running in. You're further informing the fans. You know, get the show if you're not already because Cody's winning that title tonight. And, uh, you know, you could always have Roman lie, you know, and, and out comes, you know, whoever, and then John Cena makes the save and you do the finish. Yeah, I mean, you could do that if you wanted to, but that that's that's what I would do. But you know what? Not my company. Or because of the numbers game, you have John Cena out there to offset Solo Sokoa on Saturday. Because I think your scenario is the one that makes the most sense, which is Roman and The Rock. There is some sort of miscommunication that happens, which leads to Cody getting the pin on The Rock. Now, I guess what you could also do depending on when you're going to have Seth Rollins defend that title against Drew, even though it's not, I don't think they'll do this and it's not the best idea, but you could take Rollins out of that match. If you decide you're going to do the, that match on Saturday, you could do that, I guess, if you wanted to, and then have John Cena fill that position because it's not a downgrade. I don't think for people, it kind of, again, you get the rock and John Cena in the ring at the same time. You know, you get a huge star, so you could do that that way if you wanted. But I think John Cena's presence out there to offset maybe Solo Sokoa as Jay offsets Jimmy, I think that might be the way to go. Now, is Paul Heyman going to be allowed to be out there with Roman on Sunday? I don't know. That's going to be interesting as well, too. Does he, is he... Does he take that AA? Well, is he the advisor? But, you know, or is he part of the bloodline where he, if they lose on Saturday, he can't be there? That's going to be interesting as well, too. I will say that uh, there is a way that I could see The Rock pinning Cody. And that is that Saudi Arabia wants The Rock. And Saudi Arabia's got a lot of money. And perhaps Rock has agreed, I will put over Cody in Saudi Arabia... And I will put over The Rock at next year's WrestleMania. Or The Rock can beat Roman Reigns. It doesn't matter. Actually, if it were me, I would have Cody beat The Rock in Saudi Arabia. If Rock is going to pin him at the pay-per-view. And then I would have The Rock do the full babyface turn. Rock and Roman Reigns, just like Sting's last match. Rock gets the win. Everybody goes home happy. It's not going to hurt Roman Reigns. He's he's a made man. But uh, the, thing with, the thing with pinning Cody is, dude, they have put so much heat on him and his mother and the weight belt. I mean, it just feels like you can't do all that and then beat the guy unless you're going to put him over a month later in Saudi Arabia or something. Nah, but that doesn't. We'll it see. does not. No, nah, doesn't work. To me, it just doesn't work that way. And we'll see. Maybe The Rock does do that because Saudi Arabia has thrown so much money at him. But what are the odds... And I know they're slim, but what do you think the odds would be if they posted them in Vegas on Rollins getting the win over The Rock? Minus a million. (laughs) Back in a moment, Observer Live.
I just want to make it clear. Yeah. That I did not make a mistake at the end of the last segment. No. I purposely said minus one million. Yes. So that I could come here after the break and prove that when I say something wrong, I will correct it. The odds are actually plus one million. Yes. No chance. No. Yes. Good thing I'm going to uh, double or nothing. Maybe I'll do some gambling. Going to be <laughs> going to be putting some uh, some prop bets down on the AEW show. Going to be parlaying some things together. Nah, I don't bet. But we don't. I actually I will bet. I bet this next match is going to be the greatest. All right. Fans have voted. Oh no. Yes. Yes, Great Ocon and Tangaloa will be battling in a rural, rural, rural <laughs> revitalization in Hamamatsu match. Rural revitalization <laughs> in Hamamatsu match. It will be best of three falls. The first fall, 10-minute most covers match. Every pinfall attempt results in one point. So we are guaranteed a second round. Second round is a five-minute eel-eating contest. Whoever can eat the most eel will win that round. And presumably, I mean, it could be over at that point. Right? Yeah, that's true. Great Okan gets the most pins, and then he eats more eel. Yeah. It's over. He is, he is the rural revitalization in Hamamatsu champion. But if it goes to a third fall, it will be a strap match. Competitors join with a strap and must touch all four corners consecutively. Yes. Have you ever had eel before? No. I've had it with sushi. It's fine that way in small doses when you have a bunch of other sushi and sashimi laid out on your plate, but... I don't know about cooked eel. And, well, Great Ocon, is it possible to use the eel as a weapon? These are questions no, that I'm going to answer. No, it is an eating answer. contest, bro. A travel guide for Hamamatsu reads. They've had pie eating contests, and we've seen pies go in faces. Well, what did you do with that eel? Bro, this ain't no joke. All right. Serious business. A travel guide for Hamamatsu reads, if you hear Hamamatsu, you think of eel. <laughs> you think of garbage, think of Akim. It should be noted that 14,704 fans, 14,704 great fans, will not well, actually, be that's in not true. Sumo Hall. 14,704 voted, but 10,624 were great fans who voted for the rural revitalization rules. Approximately uh, 4,070 fans wanted that other stupid step. What was it, like Last Man Standing? Texas it was Death a Match? Texas Death. Yes. Yeah, yeah, what a silly thing to ask for. Yeah, idiotic. <laughs> it was a landslide. It was a landslide. So there you go. I'm excited for that match. Now, if Okan wins that, does he automatically get a shot at the winner of Naito and Sushi? I don't know. It's it's we'll Naito and Suji, not Sushi. That's why you were confused. I said Suji. No, you definitely sushi. said Sushi. That's I what I heard. I wish I could have some Sushi right now. Maybe I'll go get some after this show. Tonight is Dynamite. Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Montreal? <laughs> is that <Say> correct? <laughs> I do like Vinny where every now and then I, I uh, roll my R's. And, uh, <laughs> Incorrectly. For let, let's see how uh, the show's doing, according to uh, WrestleTix. They've been doing better of late. All right, uh, Montreal. I don't know where it's at. How come? How come there's no update? Quebec is where it's it's at in Canada. Well, I know that, but it's not in uh, Montreal. Yes. Well, I it's googled the, uh, Montreal and it didn't come up. Not the Coca Cola Arena. What do they call it now over there? All right, the, uh, Telepoint Arena, something like Quebec. That. Center Videotron is yeah, where Videotron, it is at. That's what it is. 4,117 tickets. Not bad. They got 312 left. And uh, this is the lineup. Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, Sky Blue, and Anna J. Number one contenders match with Mercedes on commentary. Yes. 
Swerve Strickland versus Takeshita in what is now being billed as a number one contenders match. Good. Good thing we're doing this before these rankings come out. Oh, stupid rankings. Will Ospreay will be facing Katsuyori Shibata. We have got the tag team tournament quarterfinal matches with the Best Friends versus Undisputed Kingdom and the Young Bucks versus Private Party. That is the lineup for the show. Should mention that uh, WWE is uh, doing a very, very good job in terms of uh, advertising matches and lineups in advance. We've already got uh, two segments for Raw Monday: Rock and Roman appearing in DIY versus the New Day, or DIY and the New Day versus the Judgment Day, and uh, they've already advertised five matches for uh, next week's NXT. Six days from now, we have got Anderson and Gallows versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Joaquin Wild and Cruz Del Toro. That match sounds awesome. Yeah, for the uh, number one contendership at the pay per view, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams will have their final face off. Supernova Sessions with Lyra and Roxanne. Sol Ruka versus Blair Davenport. And Fallon Henley versus J.C. Jane. That is the lineup for next week. Well, let's be real about this, too. If you've been dotting your I's and crossing your T's and you're booking towards a certain date, which they are with Stand and Deliver, they should have this stuff laid out and ready to go and an idea on what they want to do and be able to advertise things. Any wrestling promotion should be able to do that only a couple weeks out. So, yes, we should give them credit for it because it has been so slapdash in the past and it is often the case with AEW, the same exact thing. But these are things that it's like, okay, we'll give you a little gold star, but that's all you're really going to get for doing what you should be doing. All right. So uh, I'm working on a business deal right now that you'll be all pleased to hear about. Ooh, does it benefit me? No. Oh. All right. Got that handled. All right. Um, a, this is one. This is an all-timer right here, brother. This show? Not even yeah. close. <laughs> Have you listened to this show before? I try not to this go back This isn't and do even that. in the top 50% of all-timers on this show. Uh. All right. Yeah, Tony is just not that Tony. Leader, texting me <laughs> repeatedly. All right. Yeah, tell him I said I. So a couple of notes from uh, the NXT show. Besides that, awesome. There was actually a lot of really good stuff I thought on the show, and uh, one of them obviously was the prime target. That was by far the highlight. And uh, the other thing that I loved, and I, I encourage people to watch it, is uh, the main event. Alpha Academy versus Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. Man, Braun. Dude, this match was great. And I've said it before. I prove myself right every time I watch NXT. Braun and Baron are an incredible team. They are being wasted in NXT right now. I know when they call Braun up and start pushing him after Mania, it's going to be as a singles guy. But it makes me sad because... Golly. Don't be, Brian. There's a chance that Baron Corbin comes up right there with them. And hey. even if they are not partners, they can be associated together. I, I would be totally fine with that. And they they were wrestling Tozawa and Otis. And the story is that if Tozawa and Otis won, they would end up in the tag match at, at uh, Stand and Deliver. They did not win. But, dude... I'm telling you, this this Otis, he's... He stands out so much better there, doesn't he? Well, here's the thing. He is great at being American super porky, okay? He's fantastic at it. Comedy, silliness, crying over a ham, whatever. <laughs> but there was no comedy from Otis in this match. This was a match where Otis is fighting for a shot at the tag team titles. He's facing Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. And he's decided, today I shall be Vader. And, God, when this guy is serious, monster, he is great. And, like, Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin, they're a big powerhouse team, and they do all this cool stuff. 
but then they run into this walking brick wall of pain. And then, of course, you know, Tozawa's, you know, he's great. You guys, some of you don't remember Tozawa. This guy used to be 220 pounds. Yeah. He was a big, wow. fat let's guy. Not, let's not push that here. Well, maybe 200, but, like, he was a big, fat guy. And and I guess, like, one day, you know, he wanted some motivation to lose weight. Right? And then well, he, he did, like, some sort of series where he was going to lose X amount of weight by the end of the series or whatever. And now he's, like, 155 pounds, and he's shredded. So, anyway, look up Fat Tozawa on the Internet. You'll be like, wow. <laughs> wow. But, anyway... Didn't have much motivation there for a while. So the finish of this match was just like, Tozawa, like, first off, they gave uh, Otis a double powerbomb through the announce table. And uh, it was like a seismic event when he went through that table. So he's out. And then poor Tozawa's alone in the ring with these two monsters. And he hits this awesome super kick on Baron Corbin. And he goes for the pop-up Hurricane Rana. But Baron stops him upside down. He power bombs him to death. He hoists him up into the backward roll that that uh, Wardlow does. But instead of going for another uh, power bomb, he hoists him into the backward roll. And all of a sudden, Braun comes in and mowed this guy. I mean, he sliced him in two with a spear and he pinned him. This match was awesome, <laughs> absolutely awesome. And when it was over, it's like there's a lot of, you know, the the. Match next week, it's going to be Braun and Baron against either the LWO, the OC, or Nathan Frazier and Axiom. Any of these matches would be good, but it's got to be Nathan Frazier and Axiom. I hope so. Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin versus Nathan Frazier and Axiom. I'm not kidding. That could be the match of the weekend. I mean, that would be amazing. So I'm praying Like, I prayed for the rural revitalization match. I am praying Axiom and Nathan Frazier win this match. And they don't do some schmas and end up doing a four-way. It's just got to be two-on-two. Man. Loved it. The party afterwards with Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Braun Breaker, and Baron Corbin, that cookout and party afterwards, that could be more fun than anything that takes place with the match. But, uh, yeah, I would like to see Axiom and Nathan Frazier just because I think they're a great team. Nathan Frazier can be so perfectly annoying and such a prick because we've seen him obviously be the baby face who can pull off all the moves and get one over on the bad guys. But he's also, in this incarnation, come across as being able to be very slimy. So it works, and I'd like to see them roll with them some more. Chat is just flabbergasted by the Fat Tozawa. Tozawa. <laughs> yeah, you learn something new every day, huh? And this person says, F4W, all about rural revitalization. Yeah, we are. What do you think Whale Scout is? Yeah. Although Whale Scout uh, does something a little bit different. I, I guess <laughs> you could exactly consider rural. it rural revitalization. They, they take stuff that is now, uh, you know, they make it rural again. Is that rural revitalization? Yes. For okay. this show it is. Anyway, back in a moment, Observer Live. There's Joe, Rick Uchino, CagesideSeats.com. Congratulations on a great performance tonight. Just uh, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, your new number one contender uh, in Wardlow and the words he had this week where he said he was coming for your spot. Yeah, uh, and, and much like everybody else in this in this entire roster. I mean, it's no, it's no surprise Wardlow finds himself where he is. Obviously a very domineering individual that has had tremendous success, admittedly even against me. But uh, right now, this is a very different version of myself. This is not one that is distracted by other championship titles. I'm the AEW world champion, and Wardlow will, look, will, will soon learn why that is. Hey, Joe, uh, DJ Danny Ocean, 101.9 KISS FM. Um, you mentioned Will Ospreay. We talked about Wardlow. Uh, is there any of these new up-and-coming guys you got your eye on that you want to get in the ring with yourself that you want to defend your title against? You know, once again, I, I refer back to championship protocol. I mean, they have to earn this spot. I mean, this is not me up here picking out dream matches, trying to be nice about this. No, this is me uh, supporting the integrity of the championship that only the best grapplers in the world will compete for. 
So, uh, you know, is, is there a, a laundry list of wrestlers I'd be more than happy to take on in the ring? Yeah, every single one of them. And you look up and down our roster, you tell me one person that isn't a dream match. I know what this company is capable of. I know about the competitors in this company. And I am more than happy to prove each and every one of them that they're second tier and they're just not on my level. Joe, uh, Swerve made light of the uh, announcing in a poncho situation. Was mm -hmm. there ever a time in your life that you doubted that you would be back here where you are in this position? No, because obviously I was planning and taking the time to recover so that I could be back here at this capacity competing at this level. You know, far too, too many uh, uh, dumber athletes in this industry uh, don't take the time to heal. You know, don't bet on themselves and say, hey, listen, I'm going to step away from, from things a little bit and I'm going to come back um, uh, not 90 percent, not 80 percent, 110 percent. And I took that time and I came back 110 percent. Now I'm AEW world champion. So, I mean, th this is just indicative of me understanding what I need to do to get things done. You know, I'm, I'm playing this on a very different level than everybody else. Everybody else out here just hoping they get their shot, hoping they're doing things. I'm planning dynasties. And I mean, it starts with it starts with me. And that's not going to change anytime soon. Bro. I mean, they're they're playing chess. They're they're playing checkers. I'm out here playing chess. I mean, this is it's a totally different game, man. And uh, you know that, that that time. I mean, she, doing commentary and punches. I I'm still a millionaire. You know, I know what he's talking about. You know, so I mean, he he may not like that issue, but hey, that that guy on the punch just whipped his ass tonight and is still world champion. So I mean, you, you tell me, you tell me who's running things around here. Well, speaking of Whale Scout and rural revitalization, to go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez, X, whatever it's called, or you go to Facebook.com slash Whale Scout, we're doing a special fundraiser right now to build a rainwater harvesting system. I don't know what that is, but it seems very important. So uh, all the details are on the Facebook page, Facebook.com slash Whale Scout. And I'll actually edit that with the exact link here in a moment. But you got any spare change laying around? You want to make a uh, donation? It's a tax write-off. Uh, 501c3, registered 501c3, Well Scout. Much more moral than your organ harvesting campaign that you had that one time. But we don't want to talk about that right now. I am so disgusted by you. But you can check it out. Facebook.com slash Whale Scout. It's linked on my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. We appreciate everybody's... Uh, Everybody's donations if you have any spare change. And I should note, a couple of changes to the schedule this week. The Landstorm show will not be taking place this afternoon. No what? Landstorm today. But he is uh, he is going to be doing a... Uh, re he's going to replace Vinny tomorrow. Some F4W rural revitalization. <laughs> Vinny is not around for the Brian and Vinny show where we review AW at NXT. So Lance will be doing it. Tomorrow night, 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern. All of this only for subscribers, WrestlingObserver.com, Video.F4WOnline.com. So uh, check it out, everybody. And uh, that's it. I want to thank Mike, as always, callers and listeners, everybody to the studio. Back tonight for subscribers, Dave Meltzer, Wrestling Observer Radio, late tonight. Also, WrestlingObserver.com or Video.F4WOnline.com. Check it out. Sign up. 14,000 archive podcasts. Can't go wrong. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>